Okay, so next up is interval and set builder notation. And so you might remember with um, less than and greater thans, that's where we're going to use parentheses on our interval notation. With less than equal to greater than equal to, that's where we're going to have our brackets. And then remember when, when on our graphs, and I'll do all this with an example and this will make more sense. Um, when we do these on a graph, open dot goes with no equals and then close dot on our endpoints goes with equal signs. So let me remind you how that looks with this. So we could write this as an inequality, um, where here this is x is less than four, less than equal to four, or x is greater than or equal to six. And so remember with interval notation, that's where we use the endpoints to denote the intervals of the solution. Um, and so out here lives negative infinity, out here lives positive infinity. And so looking at this number line, my farthest to the left is going to be negative infinity. So that's my first endpoint. And infinity, you can never include. It's not a solid point. You can't get there. You can always go farther. So infinities are always a parenthesis. And then that's going to go up to and include the four. So that's my next endpoint because that is a solid um, on the graph, on the endpoint. I know it's an equals or a bracket. And then remember when we have a gap like that, that's a union. And so six picks back up, that's my next endpoint. And then, then that goes out to infinity. So for interval notation, we're just going left to right, starting at negative infinity, going up to this four, we're including the four, so we're using a bracket to include. To include. Union, remember that's how we get over these gaps, and this is our, our math symbol for or. Picks back up at six and then goes out to infinity. And again, parenthesis on both the infinities because we can't get there. Uh, this next one, so same idea. It looks like it starts at two, goes to five. And so parenthesis on the open dot because that would have had to have been a, a, a not equals. And then bracket on the five because it's closed dot. Again, we got a gap, so that means union. And then we pick back up at eight. And then that extends forever, so to infinity. So that's your interval notation uh, based on a graph. And then down here, we're going to have a few that are set builder notation. So these are a lot like inequality notation, except they have this fancy, I'll write it a little bit bigger. Uh, that's a terrible looking bracket. Um, they have this fancy thing at the front that says the set of X such that. That's how that little chunk right there reads. And so this is the set of X such that three is less than X is less than or equal to seven. So that would mean the X is between the three and the seven. So this is one of those um, continued inequalities if we took if you took 98 that you would have seen. Um, so this would go three and then to seven with a bracket. And this one, so I'll just make a little, not a good graph, but just a, something I can point at. Um, and this one, it doesn't say to graph it, but let me go ahead and do that anyhow, just because I think it's helpful um, to kind of get your head around it. So here the three would have been an open dot, the seven would have been a solid dot. And this is saying the X is gonna be bigger than three, but it's gonna stay less than the seven. And so when I'm doing this, I'm kind of picturing the graph. And then this, this notation actually looks a fair bit like the graph. This one looks less like the graph. So this looks, um, X is less than or equal to negative one. So that's going that way or x is greater than two. Oops, that should be open, sorry. So that'd be going that way. Um, so that's kind of what I'm picturing when I write the interval notation. So this would go from negative infinity to negative one, and then union two to infinity. And then this last question is asking us to find the domain and range based on a graph. And then for this, we're going to report the answer in interval notation and actually set builder notation too, I just saw. Um, and so we'll use that notation that we were just reviewing to answer these questions. So um, domain, remember that's our X values and range is our Y values um, or inputs and outputs if you prefer. And so domain, if I look right, the farthest to the, a good way of thinking of domain is farthest to the left, farthest to the right. So right here, that's as far as my graph is going to get to the left. So my domain on this is going to be negative four, and that's a solid dot, so I'll use a bracket there. And then this goes forever, right? 
And what people do is they go, okay, well, it's going down, so that's negative infinity, which will be true when we're talking about range. But it's going down, and it's also going to the right. So in terms of the x values, it starts here at negative 4 and then goes forever out. So be careful that that is positive infinity, because that's we're talking about this, not that right now. So then for our range, now we're going to talk about that. So for our range, this does go down forever and ever and ever. So that is going to go, it's going from negative infinity, and it's going to come up to and include 3. So if there's graph there, it's a bracket, because if I ask you when x is 1, what's y, you tell me it is 3. So 3 is absolutely included. Uh, next one, domain farthest to the left appears to be negative 6. And, oop, i got to go back and write the um, set building notation in a second on that. And then farthest to the right is 4. And so those are going to be bracket on this side, parenthesis on this side. And then range, um, that's going to be low to high. So it looks like the lowest the graph goes is negative 4. And the highest the graph goes is 6. So now let me go back and do... Um, the uh, set builder on this. So this would be the set of x such that um, x is greater than or equal to 4. Whoop, negative 4. And then this one would be the set of x such that x is less than 3. Um, oops, or equal to because that does have a bracket. So everything less than 3, and this one is everything greater than or equal to negative 4. Um, this one, let's see, this would go negative 6, less than or equal to x, less than 4. Oops, should be a line. And then for this one, oops, and I wrote, ah, silly, these should be wise. Um, and then for this one, set of y such that uh, negative 4 is less than y is less than 6. Hey all, this is Derek, and this is section uh, 1.3, Analyzing the Graph of a Function. And this is our uh, third of four sections on functions. Um, in this section, we're going to look at even and odd symmetry. We're going to look at um, increasing, decreasing, and constant, and how we describe that. And then also locating intercepts and, and um, the other features of a graph. So let me start with even, odd, and neither. So a couple of ways of approaching that. Let me start with graphically. So even, um, even symmetry is going to be symmetrical about the y-axis. So I always think of this as like when you're a kid and I don't know if you made Valentine's where you fold the thing over and then you cut a heart out um, along that. That's going to be even symmetry. So it's it's uh, going to be symmetrical about the y-axis. Um, odd symmetry, that's like this function over here. This one, it's a little bit harder to kind of do the folding thing, but if you fold it over and then over, so up and over, then it sits on top of itself. Um, with even symmetry, if you look, it will have, for equal and opposite x's, it will have the same y values, right? Because when you fold it up, it's going to sit on top of itself. For odd symmetry, for equal and opposite x's, it will have the opposite y values. So like here, when x is 2, this would be 8. When x is negative 2, it would be the opposite of that, negative 8. And we see that in the function part of this. This one says um, f of negative x equals f of x. So what that's saying is if I have an equation of a function and I substitute negative x and then I clean it all up and it comes out the exact same as what I started with, it's going to be an even function because when I put in x, I get some value. When I put in negative x, I get that same value. That's what that's saying. Over on this side for the odd, Um, when I put in that same test of putting in negative x, instead of getting the same thing, now I'm going to get the exact opposite. So that's an indication that um, it's going to be an odd function. Um, in terms of the names, even and odd, um, things that with even powers, if we're talking polynomials, uh, x squared would be an even function. 
um, x to the first or x cubed. That's what this one is, x cubed. That would be an example of an odd function. And so x to the fourth, x to the sixth, x to the zero, those are all going to be even functions. If you have um, x squared plus x to the fourth, because both terms are even, it, it will also be even. Same thing works with the odds. Um, when you have mixed polynomials, those ones end up being neither. Um, but that's like a little bit in terms of the graph, how they'll look, and in terms of the function notation, how we can tell. Um, so then let me show you with some examples how we can use this information to tell us something is even, odd, neither. A graph, again, uh, a table, and then also from a function. Okay, so determine if the function is even, odd, or neither. So here, if I, if I look at the, just sort of the symmetry of it, if I folded my paper over and I folded that up again, it looks like it would sit right on top of itself. So I'm guessing this is going to be odd. If I check a couple of points, when x is negative 2, the output's negative 2. When x is positive 2, the output is positive 2. So see how I'm getting for equal, I get opposites. So that is what we were saying back here, um, an odd function does. For equal values, we get out opposites. Um, for this one, if I folded that over the y-axis, you can see that it sits right on top of itself. So that is definitely even. Um, if you look at when x is 2, I got 2. When x is negative 2, it's opposite. I get 2 again. So that's this one I put in the opposite. I get out the same as what I would have for the original value. Um, same, so we can use that same idea for these tables. So if we look here, when I put in opposites, I'm getting out the same thing, right? So for this, that's going to be an even function because we're getting the same. This one, when I put in negative 2, I get negative 3. When I put in positive 2, I get positive 3. So when I put in opposites, I get opposites, and that pattern seems to hold. So this one would be odd. And here, when I put in opposites, I get completely different stuff. So that is a neither. And then we'll do even, odd, neither from equations. So with this, I'm going to literally test f of negative x. And if I come up with the exact same function as what I started with, then it is even. If I come up with the exact opposite of what I started with, or my original function with it multiplied by negative 1, then it's odd, and if it doesn't do either of those things, then that would be a neither. So here we'll find d of negative x. So that will be negative x quantity squared minus 6. And that negative, when we square it, because we're squaring the whole thing, would become a positive x squared minus 6. That is the same as the original, and so that will be even. Um, f of negative x... This would be negative x for that x plus 6 and then negative x, and that is a cube. So this is going to be negative x and then negative x quantity cubed to be negative because there's three negative signs. And you can see if I multiply my original one by a negative 1, I get this. So this one is odd. And you can also tell that because this is x squared, this is x to the zero. Those are both even powers, so it came out even. This is x to the first and then x cubed. They're both odd powers, so it came out odd. Um, this is going to be a neither because that just comes out weird. Uh, if I put in, you know, one on this, I get square root of one is one. If I put in one on this, it's it doesn't um, exist. It's an imaginary number. Um, so this is neither. And then h of negative x, so 7 over negative x. And that is odd, right? Because if I multiply this by a negative 1, I just get the negative of this, which is exactly what I got. So don't let that negative that it showed up in the denominator fool you. That is the exact same thing as that right there, which is just multiplied by negative 1. So that makes it odd. Okay, next up we have determine where a function is increasing, decreasing, or constant. And so increasing is pretty much what you would think. Uh, the function is basically going up as we travel from left to right. There's more formal definitions, but that's what it's doing. 
uh, it, decreasing is it's going down as we go left to right, and then constant means it remains at a fixed height that doesn't change. Um, important increasing, decreasing, and constant are all reported in terms of the intervals in which the behavior occurs. In other words, the answers are in x values. So we don't say it increases from this value up to this value. We say it's increasing on that interval. So we're not saying from here to here. It's where it's happening, not how much it's happening. Uh, um, and then number two, the endpoints in the interval are never included, so we're always going to use parentheses. Uh, we will never use brackets. So for number four, um, we are, for each of the tables below, select whether the, the data represents a function. If it does represent a function, determine if the function is increasing, decreasing, or constant. So easiest way is to spot uh, not a function is if there are repeating x values. So this one's going two, three, four, five, six. So we're going to be good. That's going to be a function because each of those um, is independent of one another. Uh, this one right here looks like it's going to be a problem in terms of being a function. But as long as the x values aren't repeating, you got a function. Um, and if I look at my y values, it's going negative 5, 0, 5, 10, 15. So it is for increasing x values. The y values are consistently increasing. So this one we would say is increasing, and then yes, it's a function. Uh, I wasn't too creative with my typing, so two, three, four, five, six again. So yes, it's a function. And it just is hanging out on negative one. It doesn't do anything, so that would be constant. This one, when x is two, y could be one or five. Likewise, three screws up as well. So that is not a, a function. And here we're back to 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 again. 19, 16, 13, 10, 7. You can see each time it's stepping down by 3. So this is yes, it is a function, and this one would be decreasing. Number 5, consider the graph uh, d of x. Identify the intervals on which d of x is increasing, decreasing, or constant. Give your answers in interval notation. And then it also wants us to find domain and range on this next part. So, let's see, increasing, it looks like from here to here it's getting bigger. So let's just go ahead and mark that off right now. So that part is going to be increasing. And then in here, from here to here, that's going to be constant. And then here it looks like it's going to decrease down to there. So that's going to be on this interval right here. And then after that, even though it's negative, it's increasing, right? Because it's getting bigger. And so then it's going to increase on that interval right there. So now let's write up what we got. So it's increasing from, uh, I made a bit of a mess. Let's see, negative 7 to negative, I think that was 4 under there, yep. And then we would use a union because we're going to paste together two, two uh, sections. And then this would be 2 to 5. Uh, looks like it was constant uh, from negative 4 to 1. And then right here it was decreasing on negative 1 to 2. And so someone out there is probably wondering why we're not including these endpoints. Um, let me just do a quick little bit on that. Let's take this endpoint right here. So you could argue that at that moment, clearly it's going up, right? But we don't get to see what it's doing. We need to see what it was doing before that moment because it could have been, right, coming down. It could have been continuing the same. We don't know what happened in the instant before. So what I always tell people in class, when we're looking at a point like this, this is like taking a picture of your speedometer in a car when you're driving, and it says, you know, 65, and then I go, okay, are you speeding up or slowing down? You can't tell because you can't, you need an interval on which to, to see the behavior, and you don't have anything before that moment. Um, and so this is kind of like taking a picture of the speedometer. But if I can look between two points, I can see from here to here, it got bigger than I can see speeding up or slowing down. But without an interval, um, you can't tell that. Likewise, at these points that are kind of corners or these turning points, here it was, right, 
decreasing, then it's increasing. So technically right there, it was constant for a second. So at that point, it must have passed through zero because the slope there would be zero. So that is why for increasing, decreasing, constant, always parentheses. Okay, anyhow, so then um, for part B, we do domain range for this thing. So our domain looks like farthest to the left was negative seven. And then this time I do want to use a bracket because that point was included. And then that's going through five. And then my range lowest was negative six. And highest looks like it's six. This one is basically just identifying kind of different features uh, based on a graph. And I'm going to go not quite in alphabetical order uh, just because of how I had to format it. Um, so for A, we're asked to find the domain of R and R of X, give our answer in interval notation. So on a graph where it just sort of cuts off like that, um, it is implied that these are all arrows. And if you have a dashed line like I'm showing here, it's also implied that it's never going to cross that. It's going to get closer and closer. Um, so with that in mind, our domain is now going to be from negative infinity because it's going to go forever down, but also to the left. And that's going to go up to three, but it's not going to include the three because this is what's going to be called a vertical asymptote. So we're going to approach that but not get there. You don't have to know that yet, but you do have to be suspicious of the graph doesn't seem to get there. And then we're going to union that with the other side of three because we can do everything up to it, just not include it. And then that's on out to infinity. We'll see this a lot when we're working with uh, rationals. Um, what is the range of R of X? So it looks like it goes from negative infinity because this is going down forever, does a little loop de loop there, and then goes up forever. So it looks like it's negative infinity to infinity, or all real numbers. Next one, what is R the X intercepts of R of X? So give our answers in coordinate form, ordered pairs, okay? So X intercepts are wherever we're crossing the X axis. And so it looks like it's there and there. And that would be as ordered pair negative three, zero, and then one, zero. And then I'm gonna hop down to this next question. I gotta remember to come back and grab H. Um, but this next one goes with C. So D is uh, the zeros of R of X R. It's the exact same thing as Z's. Um, so what they're trying to get you to see there, or get you to remember there, is that X intercepts and zeros, those are two words for the same things. Um, so it's just asking the same question twice and making sure that you know uh, the vocabulary on that. Uh, for E, what is the Y intercept? So that would be right there. And that would be when X is zero, Y would be one. Find R of negative four. So when x is negative 4, it looks like that would be negative 1. Um, is r of negative 1 positive, negative, or 0? So r of negative 1, right, they're not asking is negative 1 positive, negative, or 0. They're asking is this value positive or negative 0. And that's representing when x is negative 1, y is 3. And so we'd say 3 is a positive value. Um, let's see. So then we would have... I think now we're at H and then I, J, K right here. So H, how many times does the line Y equals three intersect this graph? So let's see. Um, the line Y equals three would be a horizontal line through Y equals three. So it looks to me like it does it um, three times. So right there, there, and there. So three times. Um, I for what values of x of uh, does r of x equal 1? So that means if r of x equals 1, that's the same thing as saying y equals 1. So that would be this line right here. So it looks like there's several. So for all those, uh, so it looks like x would be negative 2, 0, 2, or 4. Um, J, give the interval of, or intervals of X such that R of X is greater than zero. Uh, use union symbol if needed. So it's saying when the Y values are greater than zero. So what that means is anywhere that we are above the X axis. 
So that would be from negative three, it's above. Oh, I gotta exclude one right there because you see how it comes down and touches? This is not equal to, it's saying greater than. So I have to be careful of that. This is gonna go negative three to one. And then we have union one to three. And I can't include the three because there's an actually graph there. So the graph isn't greater than because it's not, it doesn't exist. And I gotta pick up on the other side of three. That's a little annoying. And then on out to infinity. Oops, close my parentheses. And then lastly, give all the intervals um, of x such that r of x is less than uh, zero. So that's a place that would be below and that one's a little bit easier because there's just this one interval over here. So that'd be negative infinity up to negative three. And again, we're using parentheses there because <clears throat> we don't want to include the zeros.